Hello everybody and welcome, would you believe, to Minecraft. I am jumping on a hype train, let's go! So we're just... We're in the middle of nowhere. Alright guys, I hope you are ready for a, a survival island let's play, because it seems like that's where we are. What's the seed for this place? There you go. The... Wait, where is the seed even kept now? Is it even on here? It doesn't look like they have the seed anymore. Either that or I'm just blind. Either of those works fine for me. Uh, they both explain the same thing, essentially. But yeah, I don't... I don't... Huh. Weird. But yeah, so I am just on this world. Uh, which appears to be an island in the middle of nowhere. So that's fun. I had no idea I'd be getting a survival island, but I'm kind of glad about that because that's a new challenge and one that I don't have to deal too much with the the semantics and details of. So I'll just throw this together. All right, we have a crafting table. Ladies and gentlemen, progress. Uh, we want to make sure we get a sapling off of this. So my render distance currently cannot see any other shores and I think we might keep it like that because it seems more adventurous this way. We could be pirates sailing upon the ocean blue as we try to seek grand fortune. I'll probably also wind up posting a video on Sea of Thieves uh, here this upcoming Friday since I bought that game and I've been having a lot of fun with that. So you know, lots of stuff moving forward, trying to do things in the world. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome indeed. Uh, apple. I can't eat it. I also noticed recently, because I also really got into Adventure Time, uh, that, uh, that they have a video on Minecraft, which surprised me very much. I was not expecting this. A lot of the worlds and whatnot of things I really enjoy seem to be appreciating this fact. I only got one sapling out of that. Are you serious? Am I going to die here? Is that what's it destined for me? Is my doom prophesized? It might be. The gods might be unhappy with my work. Here we go. I'll go ahead and make... Do I want a pickaxe? Is that what I'm looking for? Yes, it is. Because materials. But I also want to knock some wood out of that tree. But before that, I'll probably start a mine shaft. Like, right here. Alright. Uh, pickaxe. Here we go. It was funny to watch uh, Jacksepticeye play Minecraft because he hasn't before. And it was interesting to see not only those worlds collide, but just how different starting out must have been for people who started out without any premise about the game. Because when I started out, I had been watching uh, the Yogscast's Shadow of Israfel series way, way back when that was still coming out. Uh, so I would learned quite a few things about the game quite long before I actually started playing it. So I actually didn't have that moment that many other people had where I had to figure out the controls or things like that. I imagine a lot of kids who were uh, 12 at the, well, a lot of adults now, but people who were 12 at the time of 2012 or 2011, I don't even remember when I started playing. It was, uh, I think like mid, early 2011, because Shadow of Israfel had been coming out for a bit, but it wasn't over. Um, so yeah, there is that. But yeah, anyone who was like 11 in 2011 probably had a similar experience, unless their parents were willing to buy it for them off the bat, of not really knowing what they were... Not really knowing anything about Minecraft, but getting into it via YouTube as opposed to playing the game itself. What am I saying? I'm rambling, but it's fine. It's it's accurate, probably. Maybe in some form or destination. So, yeah. Now we are here on an island where uh, 10 years after I've started playing the game, essentially. And... Or started knowing about the game, at least. I say, but I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure I keep getting my times wrong because I don't remember the time. I got into I got into it like just after the redstone update, and I do not know when that was. 
But I know that redstone was a big thing for me when I first got into it. I even made, like, one of the first things I made was a little, like, too high one by two door with since I couldn't acquire sticky pistons I put pistons on either side and I made this this little repeater circuit that went around and it stretched across the hallway you went through so it wasn't even concealed but it was like it pressed one and then a few seconds after via a lot of repeaters it pressed the other one closing it back up and I had buttons on both sides one which was connected directly to the circuitry it was ugly but man I was so proud of it because it worked it wasn't even secretive, it was like the only indent in a wall, so I even wound up like making multiple indents later, so that I could camouflage it a bit. But yeah, fun memories, man. That was way back in the early days. Back before it got this whole resurgence that has been going through and whatnot. It was an exciting time, and I was quite happy to be part of it. I was quite happy to experience the game in such a state when it was so new. Another thing that really got me into it was, um, was, frick, I do not remember his channel name. Alex, he was called, he had an avatar that was like a ninja with a red bandana. Um, frick, Epic ZP, I think. Man, I don't, I don't even remember, it's just been so bloody long. Uh, he and Verider, if you remember that channel, uh, did a series called Epic Stuff, which was really cool back in the day. Uh, well, it's still really cool now. It was just running back in the day. But it was really fun because uh, the host, who I'm going to call uh, Alex because I can't remember his channel name, um, was uh, he was the host, essentially. And he would review these epic builds like Minas Tirith, uh, the World Tree, I think it was, or the Giant Tree, one of those. Uh, it reminded me a lot of the World Tree in Norse mythology. I sound like such a nerd. Uh, it was cool at the time. That's what was going on. It was a cool thing, and I liked it. So I enjoyed the video a lot. Um, I want more saplings, my dude. Uh... Uh, it was a lot of like really cool builds that they went through. It had a lot of jokes that I didn't get as a kid. And as an adult, I'm kind of just surprised at how it was. But it was also like I remembered some of them as I grew up. And they came to make sense to me later on when I started understanding what they meant. But um, it was interesting to me at the time to enjoy that series and things like that. That's terrifying. To enjoy such a series and to enjoy things like those epic builds. I remember one of the things, one of the first things I wanted to set out to do when I first figured out how to use creative mode because that was a process, man. I did not know shift was go down, so I got stuck anytime I went upward. This is not how you make a pickaxe. Um, but yeah, that's also not what I wanted to make. But I wanted to make like an epic uh, structure so that they'd review it on the show and things like that. I never did wind up making one because I sucked at it. But it was something that was on my mind. And I remember that very fondly. I remember working on those kinds of things. I tried a number of different things. The one I settled on eventually being a castle. But I didn't do much in the way of actually finishing it up. Something else I did do was uh, I had a survival world, and I remember this very distinctly. It was the first survival world I ever made back when I was playing on a little laptop that my dad had, a spare one. Um, and I was like 10 or 11 years old, I can't remember. And, uh, and I was playing on this laptop, and I started up a world, and I started in a spruce forest. This was at the time that spruce forests were a thing, but I don't think spruce wood was. And, uh, and one of the things I did was uh, I went around and I found this set of little hills. They were practically mountains. They were basically as mountainous as you could get before there were mountains. And uh, there were three of them facing the north, east, and south. And I remember this. No, northwest and south. And I remember this because the sun would always set between the arches. There was a big arch that went over the sun, and there would be it would sink between it, and there was a big lake right beyond it, and it was a lovely sight. 
I even at one point when I had full diamond gear and whatnot fell off that cliff and hit the ground too hard and died and I had to find my house again because it was far away from spawn. Um, and I remember living in that area and that was also where I started, um, I had a little hut house that I lived in which also had a little display case that I put a cactus behind because why not. Uh, and that pack, that cactus was my pet and I cared for it even though I put it in a cage and didn't really look at it much. But I valued the fact that I found a cactus because there was no desert for miles. So it was like a treasure to me. It was this rare resource. And, um... And I played on that world for a while. I dug a mine shaft out of one of the neighboring uh, mountains, and I made the staircase into like stone steps and things like that, so that it'd be easy to travel up and down. Um, and that was fun. I don't remember a lot else that I did. I remember I did a lot of exploring. I'd wander off for days on end with a map, uh, oftentimes going off the map and subsequently getting lost, but I would be trying to find some sort of treasure or secret thing, because this was back in a time when I didn't really, I wasn't really sure if the things the Yogg's cast were doing were real or scripted, and I wanted them to be real, because I liked the idea of these quests, these adventures that you could go on. That was what initially got me into the game in the first place. Um, and that was really exciting for me at the time. It, uh, it was really fascinating to me to be able to accomplish that sort of thing. And I remember, I remember uh, about a year later, I think it was, uh, I had basically done everything there was to do in Minecraft bar find a stronghold because Enderman never spawned for some weird reason. And I still don't know why that was at that time. Uh, everything else spawned. There was even a point where a creeper like blew up the front end of my house. So I couldn't even, like, find anything. But, um... Find anything. That's not the right sentence. So I couldn't even do anything. It just blew up right behind me while I was building the house. That was very early on. But the Enderman... I couldn't find Enderman anywhere. So I couldn't get Ender Pearls. Uh, subsequently couldn't get Ender Eyes. Uh, I did make a Nether Portal. Uh, I built a Nether Portal. I built it deep underground. And I had this little spiral staircase that was 2x2 two two wide. And made like out of cobble, nether rack, and other materials. I just scrambled together after I'd made the portal. It was really rubbish, but hey, it worked. I even made like part of a path that was initially like cobble out of nether rack because I started gathering it and I had a lot of it. It was ugly, but hey, it worked. Um, and uh, and yeah, I just I at some point I basically wound up doing everything there was to do. And uh, and then I discovered mods, and the first mod I ever installed was a mod called Buildcraft. I remember this distinctly. I installed Buildcraft on uh, on an off day, and it was basically the time I had to get off the computer because it was back when we were sharing it and I didn't have my own. And uh, I just really quickly crafted a wooden pipe to make sure I'd installed everything correctly, and I had, and I was so happy about that. Uh, and then a couple, uh, I think the next day, I got back on and I got to play, and, uh, and I built a quarry that uh, dug into that mountain, and I'm pretty sure that was the last thing I ever did on that world, because that was about the time that the laptop got corrupted, and uh, it couldn't work anymore, so I couldn't play video games, which sucked, and I was distressed about, but... Um, but my dad did a whole clearing out thing, but about that point I'd also realized that I'd probably benefit from a better computer. Uh, so I wished for one, and it was highly unlikely that I'd get one. So like I'd sacrifice, I wished for one for my birthday because my parents were really sweet and would always give us presents on a birthday. Um, and it was a really nice thing of them to do. So one of the things I put on my wish list was a computer so that I could play video games. Um, and on my birthday, at the sacrifice of any other gifts, they gave me a, a computer. This sounds really pretentious, and it kind of is, but I was, I was really lucky to get that at all, because they easily could have said no. It was a really expensive thing. It was like, like $400, I think it was, and that's, that's a lot of money. Like Some of you probably don't even know how much money $400 is, is, but I currently work minimum wage at a bloody, um, grocery store, right? 
I work minimum wage, uh, nearly. I work for nine dollars an hour, and uh, if we just round that up, if we say it's ten, right? Four hundred dollars is forty hours. That may not seem like a lot, but that is more than a day, more than a whole day. And I don't even work whole days. I work anywhere between four to eight hours. So working out four hundred dollars is easily like three weeks of my time of not being able to do anything I enjoy, of having to push carts in the heat, bag stuff for really picky customers, things like that. All of that, and that can't go to expenses. That's the other thing. That money that I'd earn, it can't go to expenses like food or water. If it does, the time's going to be even longer before that cash can earn that amount of money. But they did. They gave that to me. They saved up and they afforded a computer, so I was then able to start playing video games and learning to program. That was kind of my trade-off of their being so nice to me. I ought to learn some of these life skills that's going to help me later. So I've learned software and things like that. I've started to try and develop video games, things of that nature. But back to the story at hand. So I got a computer. And I played on it, like, religiously. There was, I'd play on it all day, and I'd have to be told numerous times to get off at night because I just wanted to play video games all the time, primarily Minecraft. And about, about three years later, no, no, there's a step before that. About six months after that, I had this grand idea that I wanted to record YouTube videos. Um, and so I got a really crappy headset with a microphone and I started recording uh, YouTube videos of me playing Minecraft initially. That was all I could record because that's all I had. Uh, and that was really fun for a time. That was something that I enjoyed doing. But I did run into a problem. And you probably can observe this if you browse the videos on my channel. I ran into the problem that I was getting burnt out of the game because I've been playing it too much. And it was just, it was really dry to me. It was, there was nothing that I could do, wanted to do, felt an interest in doing. And that's part of the reason I was so glad to be on a survival island with literally nothing that I could see because it was unexpected. It was something that I'd never dealt with before. I've never had this situation and I'm really glad to be running into something new, having returned to this game after so long. So that was a large part of my time that got burnt out. So I stopped playing it and I wanted, this was after like I'd, I'd designed like a, a working TARDIS and things like that. My friend had got me into Doctor Who um, and I started playing other video games. I downloaded Steam onto my computer uh, at the agreement with my uh, dad to play that I could buy a game that because I had some money that I'd saved up from doing chores and things like that. And, uh, and my dad had this agreement with me. He said, uh, if you're going to get one game, you can off steam because he was a little iffy about it at the time because we didn't know what it was and we'd never dealt with it before. And I remember I just watched a video on Niles's channel about a game by Tom Francis called gunpoint. And Gunpoint is this really lovely kind of short and sweet game about uh, a detective uh, named Conway? Conrad? Conway. I think it's Conway. Uh, he wears a hat and a trench coat and he's really awesome and he can leap through like glass windows and things like that and I really loved the game and it was really cool. That was like the first game I got that wasn't for an Xbox and wasn't Minecraft. And that was really exciting for me because I got to play this whole new game about being a detective and exploring the noir style and things like that. And that definitely really built my interest in that sort of genre and things like that. Um, so I do have like some games and whatnot that I bought later that were um, based around that kind of thing. And a lot of movies that I watched based on that too. And that was just that was really monumental, but as a result, because I started getting into these other games and started getting into things like that, I 
started to play Minecraft less and less and eventually it just fell out of my life practically entirely. I was only doing it for videos on the rare occasion that I did do videos on it. And uh, and that was pretty much it. That was all I really wanted to have in regards to it. So I didn't do much with it. I just let it be and went about my life doing other things. I've come back to it a few times, as you've no doubt seen from the videos on my channel, but eventually I got to this point that I wanted to just do other things, because I just... I started to hate the game, but I didn't hate it because it was bad, I didn't hate it because I had troubles with it, I hated it because I had both too much and nothing to do at the same time. Uh, those of you who have ever been burnt out probably understand what I mean by that very well. It's not a fun feeling. I've burnt myself out of things before, but it was the first time something I enjoyed uh, got burnt out. And it was kind of depressing in a way, because it was like, well, what am I supposed to do? I used to say that I loved this game, and now all of a sudden it's not something I love anymore. It's not something I can truly enjoy doing. I grew out of that funk, and I didn't bother much with getting tired of things, because that's going to happen. People change. People move forward in life, and as they move forward, then different things are going to happen, and different preferences and interests are going to occur. But, it did leave me with this kind of nostalgia, I suppose, every time I come back to this game, about the days I had where I could do anything. Where everything seemed possible, and nothing seemed monumental or impossible. And that's part of the reason I enjoy what I'm doing right now, because even though I'm not, like, building a tremendous castle or building a crazy fortress or things like that. I'm currently just talking, so I don't think too hard about the fact that I'm doing things. I get a little idea and I execute it. It doesn't need to be detailed. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be mine. So I make it mine. And that's all I really need from it. But yeah. I think that'll probably be all that I do at this time. Uh, I'm going to give this a crappy roof so that it can survive a night if I come back to that. But I, uh, I'm i glad to have just made this little video just real quick. Hopping on the, the hype train and things like that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video uh, of ranting in nostalgia and other emotions regards to a game 10 years old, but still the same as ever, and yet uniquely different. Everything stays, but it still changes. Have a good one.